Now, the 2024 national budget is the annual fiscal plan uh, that government is using for the furthering of the implementation of the National Development Strategy 1, which is also known as the NDS 1 in 2021 to 2025. As a central policy document, it provides an opportunity for government to refine and refocus its priorities in order to advance the economic reforms that the nation has, which were started in 2018 with the launch of the Transitional Stabilization Program. So here on Economics 101, we seek to unpack some of the expectations that the people of Zimbabwe might expect from the finance architects themselves. What will be the national budget and what is in it for the people of Zimbabwe? Now, my name is Kurt Lee Gwindi, and today I'm joined by Dr. Zach Murerwa, an astute economic analyst who's going to speak to us about all this and more. Dr. Zach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. No stranger to our screens here on Economics 101, and we'll get uh, right into it. Doctor, what are the key targets? What were the key targets, rather, as we were looking at the 2023 national budget this year? And did we manage to actually achieve them? And what were some of the projections that we managed to achieve and some we didn't achieve? Yeah, uh, thank you. I, uh, 2023 has been exciting. Uh, despite the, 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 the break in terms of the national elections that uh, have come and gone. But from an economic perspective in terms of growth, uh, it's amazing uh, that our economy is closing the year on a positive trajectory. Uh, remember the minister had said by December he was hoping the economy would have grown just slightly around 5.2%, which might be slightly below that figure. But what has happened is IMF, World Bank, all those have confirmed that this economy has really grown. It's not easy in sub-Saharan Africa to grow an economy to that magnitude, especially given the fact that this economy has been battered left, right, and center in terms of economic sanctions, the economic embargoes. So yeah, definitely for the benefit of uh, viewers out there, our economy is closing on a growth trajectory which is okay. very positive absolutely and uh, we are talking about being marred from a background of uh, elections as well as economic sanctions but uh, let's also introspect what are the expectations um, that we are looking at here um, as a national budget is coming through um, uh, for this 2024 season that national we're budget is and has always been an instrument uh, used by government and governments all over the world to indicate to the generality of the population, including stakeholders, business community, everybody included, the desire the, in which the government wants to move in terms of expenditure profile, in terms of revenue collection, in terms of uh, interventions that are necessary, both from a monetary and fiscal perspective. So we expect this budget to zero in, remember your NDS one, is to zero in on our vision, vision 2030. Yes. And NDS1 is a total of 14 national priority areas. And we expect the minister to be telling the nation how far we have gone in fulfilling the mandates or the uh, intended desires of those 14 national priority areas. Okay. There are also expectations in terms of three critical issues at the moment. These are currency stability that is required out there so that we have current stability in our economy. Exchange related to that will be your exchange control measures and exchange management measures so that your exchange rate uh, does not go uh, on a runaway path. Absolutely. We want a situation where there are controls in terms of what is happening there. If that is done, if those two are done, there is then is a relationship because they will then have an impact uh, on your inflation if you're assuming your money supply is then also controlled, then it will have an, an impact on inflation. And we expect, again, the minister to consolidate measures that have already been taken by government during the course of 2023. And then more importantly, on the revenue side, the revenue collection measures, uh, what is going to happen to the, our tax system, our, our, our fiscal administrative system, what systems are going to be put in place, and more importantly and lastly, the benefits to industry, 
to the business community and to the ordinary men in the street. Yes. This is the, these are the expectations. Yes, yes, because extending further from what you've just said, uh, we want to talk about perhaps uh, some of the goals that come with uh, having a national budget. We're talking about promoting a sustainable economic growth. We are also talking about reducing poverty for the everyday Zimbabweans. But you also mentioned something very interesting, which is the issue to do with taxes. Um, how best um, is the going to be the issue tackling around um, uh, some of the tax reductions or increases um, going to advance uh, our economy as Zimbabwe? When you look at a budget, people must not uh, rush to tax reduction. It's more in terms of tax management interventions that are necessary. If you look at the tax structures in Zimbabwe, what we call revenues, we have your VAT, you have your PAYE, your corporate tax, your withholding taxes, your capital gains tax, and so on and so forth, including uh, the IMTT. You know, we, we have those are all taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to now look at the impact that these taxes have, particularly on an ordinary worker. Let me give you an example, Kathleen. We've had situations whereby an employee, somebody is employed, then there is PAYE. They pay PAYE, mm -hmm. and then after that, they go into a supermarket, you still pay VAT, you do an electronic transaction, you still do pay you the still have that 2%. Yeah, yes. you still have that 2% <laughs> yes. and so on and so forth. This become a reality of financing uh, the, 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 the ex expenditure profile of any government. But what is necessary in, this, in, the, in, in, in our country is to look at, if you look at tax management systems at the moment, they have been distorted by the dual currency system. So you want to look at taxation profiled in local currency, taxation profiled in USD dollars, in US dollars, for example. Well, if you look at PAYE as it is now, the tax tables graduated in US dollars and decimated in, in, in RRTGS, they, there is a mismatch. So we expect the minister to do regularization there. And probably um, I, I, I in business communities clamoring for us to go back on VAT to the 14 and a half percent. Okay. It, we, your, good, your guess is as good as mine as uh, what the minister will say because the current rate is actually VAT is 15 percent. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we will take a look at that and uh, perhaps we'll have an appreciation of some of the discrepancies between um, the US dollar and the RTGS dollar and also some of the um, lines that we put with regards to taxation and uh, perhaps also get an appreciation of what you are saying uh, the finance minister should do to improve um, some of the economic uh, downfalls that we are experiencing in Zimbabwe. But uh, for now, we'll take a short break. This is Economics 101. Please don't go anywhere. Thank you, viewers, for staying with us. If you are just joining us, this is still Economics 101, your premium program that takes a look at all issues to do with the tracking of Vision 2030, as well as the tracking of our National Development Strategy 1. Today, we're talking all things budget, and to help us unpack this and more is Dr. Zach Murerwa. Thank you so much, Doc, for staying with us. Okay.
You're welcome. Absolutely. And uh, let's just take a look at uh, some of the issues we were tracking earlier on. And this is to do with uh, some of the thoughts that you have to improve our economy with regards to recommendations um, uh, that you would give to minist key ministries. And first and foremost, I guess we should uh, just attack the angle um, that comes with it, which is what are the key ministries that also contribute positively to our budget? I, I always look at this globally. When you look at economics and economic development, you don't do an isolation. All ministries were formed for a purpose, and they've got a key and pivotal role to play. If you look at the 40 national priority areas, they actually key in to the functions and operational parameters of existing ministries. I think that's said and done. What is needed is deliverables. What is needed by each ministry to deliver what it is supposed to do in terms of the guidelines that we have, it's an excellent framework, the NDS one. It's an excellent framework, the vision that we have got. But what you need are the drivers to get us to where we want to be. And in that regard, the policies and the policy framework that has been set by government, we are saying that has been set by the Second Republic, are actually amenable to having that desirable outcome. So they are, they are very conducive as far as I'm concerned. But what we, see, what we need here, uh, one of the national priority areas is human resources and competencies and good governance. That's what people expect, good governance, service delivery, so that we get to where we are. I can give you examples of what has happened uh, uh, in, in 2023 in terms of um, a, the interventions made by the Minister of Finance in terms of procurement regulations, in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, there is uh, you know, management of the exchange control systems, the expenditure profile of government. So each and every minister must now buy in into that uh, philosophy, into, that, into those interventions and deliver. That's what that is expected. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and in mm. your view, under the prevailing economic environment, uh, what could you say are recommendations um, through the national budget? To do, what are the recommendations to restore? First and foremost, let's look at issues to do with public confidence and uh, also um, to do with the national currency in relation to the U.S. dollar, which we were speaking about. And also, um, uh, do you see the finance minister widening our tax ban? Before you embark and do any of those things, the critical thing in any economy, just like you own a, your own household, you can't budget on that which you don't have. The critical thing is productivity. Let's have productivity in all sectors, be it agriculture. Look at what, what has happened with agriculture, with mining, self-sufficiency in terms of wheat, remarkable achievements that have been made. But we have a long journey to go in so far as other aspects are concerned. For me, good governance, service delivery, those become very key, management of our own currency. There has been extensive debate. I have been part and parcel of so many um, you know, uh, uh, seminars that have taken place in terms of suggestions going on to fiscal authorities in terms of what is needed to stabilize our currency. So is Remember good governance uh, hinged on the fact that we have to increase salaries in order to gain confidence in some of the leaders. No, I look at it the other way around. Mm. You first of all have productivity. Yes. Then you increase your salaries. They are based on a factor, on a platform where you've got your ability to produce and ability to meet certain things. Mm. So that ability to produce is there. And to deliver right. The demand is there. Yes. The aggregate demand that you've got in the economy at the moment can actually uh, trigger sustainable growth mm -hmm. until 2030. So the aggregate demand that we have currently in the economy is right. But what you need there is the will, the human intervention, the human mind, the, the human set that we must look at productivity at all costs. Let me look at it from the perspective of the ordinary man in the street. They simply want bread and butter on their table, a decent meal, school fees, education, as I've said, health service delivery, housing for all for uh, for the earth and if you look at all these elements they are amongst the 14 national priority areas yes yeah so your results uh, uh, i was pleased uh, by government intervention of having performance based contracts particularly for executives directors including ministers, ministers themselves yeah, is to ensure that the, the there is constant constant monitoring of performance so that you have got productivity once you have productivity then you talk about salaries and wages. 
mm. you talk about a, a, a you know a decent salary that is able to cushion in a, way, a worker to enable them to live from day number one to day number 30. That is the norm in any economy. Okay, good governance, yeah. like you've said, uh, service delivery. But what could be rife as well, doctor, is the issue to do with accountability. You've spoken about performance-based contracts. With regards to money, especially money that is allocated to an entire country, can you say there is enough accountability, minister by minister, portfolio by portfolio, organ by organ, in your true view as an economic analyst? In my true view, it's not about rushing to assess the level of accounting of, account, of accountability first the parameters and infrastructure that has been set by government right the institutionalization you will have your audit control and audit the auditor general's uh, office which has done a wonderful job you have got your 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 your, your press, which has done a wonderful job and then those for those who are not going by what is supposed we have got the constitutional commissions especially zach doing also a wonderful job oh yes now once that is in place then you begin to talk about governance then you go to the human element which is ability to drive uh, what has been chartered in our in our in our in our, in our, in our uh, budget so where you have got allocations you take any ministry for example and it has been given money you expect good value a return through service delivery on the allocation that has been made and the monitoring mechanism is what we need to have an up game on we need really to monitor government expenditure oh yes yeah. and uh thank you for that uh, contribution we do know that uh we are also looking at the day-to-day -day zimbabwean the day-to-day -day zimbabwean is also very much affected by things like natural disasters at the present moment what is also rife here in zimbabwe is the issue to do with cholera now within the budget and within the allocations of the budget can we say that there's a certain amount that is also put aside i, I know we are we did come from back in 2019 mm. um, from a background of an entire cyclone that ravaged our nation uh, which was cyclone Idai. now um, within the national budget do we have uh, you know allowances for uh, such um, you know natural disasters that then come in um, any budgetary us. framework there are always threats hmm. 2023 to 2024 we are facing a serious threat of the El Nino phenomenon we don't know the outcome so uh, look uh, these are also unforeseen things that might happen whether the minister is going to make um, a budget for El Nino pre preparedness is another thing. But natural disasters, yes, there are th issues and things that are okay and they are out of our control. Here yeah, what I'm talking about, what is important, is to have to ensure that things that are within our control, for it, we have been, it's, it's a perennial debate that we've had. We simply need good governance, service delivery, competent people to drive us to vision 2030. That's what we need. Thank you, and uh, you've uh, succinctly said that. <laughs> and uh, we have heard it here first uh, from Dr. Zach Murerwa. We are going, we're going to continue the conversation with regards to how he is also feeling with regards to issues uh, around uh, some of these natural disasters, which he's just broken down a little bit. But we are continuing the conversation here on Economics 101. Don't go anywhere.
viewers, welcome back and uh, thank you for staying with us here on ZBC TV. Now, if you're just joining us, this is the third and final segment of Economics 101. Dr. Zach Mudeirwa joins us here in studio where we are unpacking the 2024 national budget. Now, we were just having a conversation earlier, Doc, about um, some of the natural disasters and with regards to disaster preparedness um, that we are going to be seeing um, being allocated within our national budget. But very briefly, can you please also just share share with us, um, there is supposed to be an 11% allocation that is uh, put within our budget, which we still also feel uh, maybe many of our viewers can also concur is a very small figure with regards to our nation's uh, health preparedness. But we also want to understand that um, there are so many value added taxes and taxes and you okay. think that 11% is just enough or for you it suffices and it can help the advancement of our health sector. Look, um, let me start with the natural disasters, mm. the related to climate change, um, uh, climate resilience, and all other things. It's a global phenomenon. And all over, including sub sub Saharan Africa, Zimbabwe included, mm. budgetary provisions are necessary. All right? What the Second Republic has done is to assure the nation that there is food and self sufficiency in terms of food to ensure that we, we, we mitigate yes. against these natural disasters. So you have had interventions where now those with the free funds can import grain uh, into the country. That's, that's one move, okay? You don't have to wait for, for the climatic conditions to prevail then you move in there. And I, I, I like what government had done in the last, in the, uh, when we had a, a threat of, of a cyclone in Mozambique. It didn't really actually reach Zimbabwe, but there was preparedness. So what is needed here is putting structures in place, putting finance in place, food distribution mechanisms in place and ensuring uh, that uh, we have enough resources and we are self-sufficient in terms of meeting those disasters. And they are a reality because of climate change. And talking about the 11% or what, how much the minister is going to have, let's wait and see how what is the philosophy and how much the minister is going to allocate. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate that response. And as we go further, we perhaps want to have an appreciation of uh, some of the national projects um, that were part of this national budget uh, that we've just come from. And let's talk a little bit more about the successes of this budget that we're just coming out of. I, I'm one person who wants to speak reality as people see it on the ground. Drive today from Harare to Masingo is something else. Harare to Mtare is something else. Harare to Pramtree. Okay, you but see, by something you else, see what the do you national mean? projects. By, by something else, so what do you when mean? You Maybe when I'm looking down. at there, you are looking at <laughs> massive development that you see that is visible to the ordinary eye. It's not just a question of coming up with proper infrastructure. Infrastructure developments, the interventions are happening in the agriculture, in terms of dam construction, water conservation strategies that are happening in terms of power, power and utility, electricity. Look at the current challenges that we've got. They are beginning again to affect industry. What you need here is to ensure that you've got enough infrastructure and backup to ensure that power supply and mechanisms that we put in are sustainable. I, I'm sure this is a long-term thing in terms of how much is going into the grid uh, by, from both the hydro power stations and the thermal power stations that we have, not to mention again uh, those who are having their own private stations. So oh, it's all those things you put together. So national projects have become critical and they've become very important. I've just mentioned only a few. Mm. There are a lot of other national projects in terms of housing, hospitals, clinics, deliverables. People want to see these things on the ground. You see, this economy is changing. Old, old economy could judge the performance of an economy by the growth of industry. Okay? Uh, our economy is, is actually changing. It's driven by infrastructure, driven by service delivery, driven by the needs of the ordinary person in the street. So more and more people are moving towards the informal sector. And what you need to do is actually to, inf to formalize that informal sector so that you give them that support, you give them the institutional support and uh, facilities to enable them to carry their own businesses. This is where we, sh we must move on. 
Do, let's not think about the good old days or the bad old days. Let's look at how our economy is developing in relation to fundamentals and the dynamics of change. Oh yes, the dynamics of change. Thank yes. you for that. Because we are talking about uh, young people. We're talking about marginalized groups. We're talking about uh, people who are involved in small to medium enterprises also being part of this informal sector that you speak of. What do you think could be the first step with regards to the making of this 2024 budget that can give them solid support so that they are also formalized within their sector? If you are really to formalize that, you need, you need to give them support in terms of the facilities. What is this support? Have. So okay. support would come mm. if, you, for example, let me just give you a, an example in terms of those who are uh, vegetable vendors. It's mm. just an example. Proper selling facilities, infrastructure, water, sanitary facilities in terms of what is required, in terms of your toilets, in terms of all oh, garbage disposal. This is what we lack. Mm. There is havoc. All right, and local authorities now need to play the, the game here. Local authorities, because of the devolution and the funding that is coming through, that then must be put to good use. You cannot ignore the informal sector. I believe, given a chance, that our informal sector can contribute as much as 17 to 19 percent of GDP. Okay, mm. uh, interesting yes. statistic there, and uh, still with the projects issue, as we want to really break it down, yeah. we are talking about a country um, that is coming from uh, unfinished projects such as uh, road and dam constructions, energy upgrading, amongst many other areas. What do you think needs to be done now for these projects to hit the hundred percent mark? Hundred percent mark is dependent on financing models, all right, and world all over infrastructure and infrastructure development is not financed domestically wholly. You have to engage development partners, international partners. Oh yes, because we're and looking what like is um, done the through the policy, yes, yes, which yes. is one of the national priority areas mm -hmm. of international engagement and re-engagement, is to ensure that you bring in those development partners. In the past, we have talked about uh, various facilities that we have got, your build, uh, and then uh, you transfer, your bought, and so on and so forth. These are various methods and modalities of ensuring finance for infrastructure are produced. But what is needed is to rope in the private sector, okay, to have partnership with the private sector. Because at the end of the day, if you talk about electricity, water, roads, and other networks, it's also the private sector which is going to benefit. And I look forward to organizations, particularly uh, the Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries, Chamber of Mines, ZNCC, uh, your, your agricultural employers associations, and so on and so forth, to partner with government and listen. And, uh, and the, the government should also listen because they are the people on the ground in terms of what are the priorities in terms of our national projects. Yeah. We will move. Oh yes, we will we move, will and move uh, we, we appreciate your contribution here on Economics 101, and of yeah. course, uh, like we have always had, it's always a very fulfilling, insightful, as well as succinct uh, conversation here on Economics 1. So thank you once again, Dr. Zach Murerwa. My pleasure. All right, and uh, we have been speaking to an economic analyst about the 2024 national budget. Now, this is Economics 101, where every week we ensure that you track all these issues and more with regards to the everyday Zimbabwean, which is ourselves, um, and uh, tracking issues to do with the economics and where we stand as a nation. Now, my name is uh, Kurt Lee Gwindi from the crew behind the scenes, as well as uh, everyone here at our Pocket Hill Studios here in Harare, Zimbabwe. It is a very good day, pleasant viewing, and God bless Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm.